The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 25th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any, in every ping, will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. and Z's trading to the upside. Dow's up 97 points, three tenths percent. S&P seven tenths or 31 points. Nasdaq 100, 123, a little under one percent. The same for the Russell. That's 17 points. Semis up two and a half percent, 71 points there. Trending's up a little over one percent, or 170 points. You've got gold trading out at 1767. That's up six bucks. Silver is flat. Uh, it's up seven pennies, trading at 1898. Light sweet crude is off 90 cents, 93.98 is the print there. Natural gas is up three pennies at 93.33, 9 .9 The 30 year treasury trading out at 136.25, that is up 11 ticks. Now, lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside, you've got Snowflake, which is confirming an A to B equals CD to the upside, is printing right now at 190.46 or so. It should go target 217.41 or 236.37. You've got uh, Mond God blah, 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 is up 16 bucks or 5%. Broadcom up 12 bucks, 2.5%. Baidu's up 11 bucks, nearly 8%. Lamb Research up 10, a little over 2%. Those shakers to the downside Dollar Tree. It's off 14 Dollar Trees, down 8.5%. Salesforce is off 13 bucks or 7%. Burlington Store is down 12 bucks or 7%. Splunk is doing just that. It's down 10%, 11 buckaroonies. And Adobe trading out at uh, 399 That's off 6 bucks and change. That's 1 and 6 tenths percent to the downside. So where are we going to begin? I'll tell you where we're going to begin. What I do like to be able to do is simplify things. And by simplify things, we're going to take a look at this chart here because this is now a day of resistance. And the question is, will resistance fail? Now, I don't know the answer whether it will or not, but I do know what it means if it does. So as we take a look at the four equity future contracts out here, the ES Mini, as you can see, upper left-hand corner, has closed below the bottom of its daily profile for more than two consecutive sessions. Old support, which had never held that support, becomes resistance. Will it become resistance? Well, it is so far, and that level is 41.77.50 is what we'll call it. If price closes above 41.77.50 today, then what we're looking at is a run up towards that descending trend line towards the top of the profile, somewhere between 42.63 and 43.27. The NQ is attempting to form a new profile. It is very narrow in scope. I don't recall seeing a narrow um, profile like this in a long time on a daily time frame chart. But 12.915 is support. 13.098 is resistance. If price closed above, say we had a 13.099 or above that level, that's going to suggest that price will go run up towards its descending trend line in the 13.6 area. The Dow Equity Future contract also testing what could have been old support, never did hold the support, the bottom is profile, but right now is resistance. And that is at the 33.137. So write that number down on your pad of paper. And in the case of the Russell 2000, it's gotten close, but no cigar, 
but still below the bottom of that daily profile. And that's its resistance level. That's at 1968.55 out there. If you close above that, that suggests a run up to 1994. So in summary, pay attention to the numbers. The numbers are 41, call it 4177.50 in the ES Mini. 13098.67 inside the NQ. Uh, 31, 33,137 in the uh, Dow, and 1968.55 for the Russell 2000. So resistance has held that uh, thus far. We'll take a look at short-term time frame charts, see if we see anything else out there. But this is what I consider to be the most important set of data that I can provide to you. So it's lunchtime. What are we going to do for lunch? Well, it's not lunchtime just yet. It's 11.11, but I, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. I could go for a, uh, uh, a nice, uh, I will call it uh, well, a nice uh, tiger meal right now. But let's go take a look at the ES Mini. Let's go take a look at its uh, intraday chart, see if there's any kind of signals out there to assist us in answering the question, well, is price going to take out that resistance level, the bottom of that profile, 4177? So we'll begin in the uh, lower right. The lower right, uh, what does Stevie have out there? Not much, just getting back to the overnight highs, finding resistance and backing up. The same thing on the 15-minute time frame chart. The 30-minute time frame chart really showing me that same thing, so nothing there. Uh, you do have the potential of a 60-minute time frame Roachman to mitigate top. Now, it has, this is the ES Mini, it has a TD9 count top. That occurred last night about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, just as uh, Europe was coming online. And then price pulled back and tested support. That was the bottom of its profile out there, so that level is held. So I've kind of got a neutral-ish type signal out there, but it does appear. Now, look, it's only 12 after 11, so we won't know till noon. But uh, if this does, in fact, produce a bearish reversal candle, that's going to suggest at least another run for 41.56 or perhaps 41.42. So there's the first piece of information. No topping signal on the 120-minute time frame, none on the uh, 240, none on the five-hour chart out there. So how do we summarize this? There's not a great set of information out here right now to tell us, to share with us, to suggest to us whether or not price is going to be able to take out that resistance level of 41.77. I wish that were not the case, but it is the case. Let's take a quick peek in at the NQ. Let's get those charts fired up here. And it'll take just a moment to populate that. So all that is taking place. Uh, and maybe what we'll do during one of the uh, breaks out there is pull up the uh, top uh, NDX 100 stock. So, you know, one thing. Oh, what did I do? Stevie, not good. I uh, didn't put in the uh, correct uh, full symbol out there. And so uh, now what I'll do, just as a game plan B, is uh, while that is uh, calculating, let's just take a look at market breadth. See if market breadth is going to give us any kind of clue out here. So let's take a look at our dashboard. Uh, if we take a look at the S&P 500, we do have a bullish crossover on the 60, 240. We're still in the negative zone on the daily. Let's see how negative it is. We have 104 instruments above the top of the profile, 154 below the bottom. Let's check out the NASDAQ 100 right now. NASDAQ 100, we're only in the green, only have a bullish crossover on the 60-minute time frame. The daily has got its work cut out for it. You've got eight instruments trading above the top of the profile, uh, 49 trading below the uh, bottom. So you got to expect, a uh, when you have conditions like that, certainly suggest a uh, very choppy market. Now we have the NQ charts up here. What do we see here? See the potential on the 60-minute chart again, approachment to indicator top. So it's really the 60-minute time frame chart that's the one that's providing the uh, most signals. Although two, the 240 could form a uh, TD9 count top by day's end. Steve Broge with TFNN. We'll be right back. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Mr. Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back up, folks. Dow's up 17, SP's up 21 points right now. Let's get to our first question. This is coming in from uh, Nick. Nick says, good morning, Steve. Uh, based on the comments you made yesterday about the uh, semis, SMH is testing support. I bought SOXL. SOXL, I know you mentioned resistance at 235. Would you mind going over the SMH or SOX uh, as it's climbing the wall? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sure, absolutely. So let's go take a look at So there's a brand new profile, Nick, that uh, just formed uh, this morning, formed right after the market opened. So I'm glad for your question out there. So yesterday, what I suggested was that if this is just a counter trend rally, price would find resistance at 233.55. 233.55 is the center, well, of yesterday's profile. And that was because it was a bear structured profile. We had more than two consecutive closes below the bottom of that, and counter trend rallies typically end right there. Well, it turns out we get a brand new profile today. And the top of that profile, that's your resistance level, is at 233.79. Now, it's bullish in structure. We could just see price consolidate here between the top of 233.79 and the bottom at 227.73. Now, the weekly has also held support. That's the top of its weekly profile out there. On a monthly chart, price is dealing with the bottom of its monthly profile, the 234 level. So your first question was, was uh, just what I might going over the SMHs. So you're up at resistance. Let's go take a look at those intraday time frame charts, see if there's any kind of signals there that might assist us with, well, is price going to be able to take out that resistance level? So far, the theme resistance has been about, uh, you know, is, is in, in each of the charts that we're taking a look at today. I mean, the resistance inside those equity future contracts out there, they'll tell us a ton. If price does or does not take those levels out in the SMH, really, we've got that same kind of thing. So now we've got the nine or eight panel set of charts out here from an intraday's perspective. You can see on a 15-minute chart out there, this top with a TD9 count pattern. So that suggests price should pull back to 231.80 or thereabouts. That's the asset and change line. That number will change by pennies moving up or down. But if price does hold that level and then takes out the high of the day out there, what you will have is an A to B equals CD to the upside on a 15-minute time frame. We have any kind of topping signal on the 30-minute. We don't have a topping signal on the 65-minute chart, nor do we on the 130. With regard to those other three, prices are trading above profile levels. So for those three charts, the signals are bullish. You can see the bottoms were formed with Rhodes momentum indicator signals as well. 
up to the 195 minute chart. So we know on the daily time frame, which is not showing up on this chart right here, this white background chart is not yet picked up on that new profile, but it is a solid new profile out there. Um, we can see that the 195 minute chart, which had a TD9 count bottom, price has found resistance. That's its green oscillator and change line. So price is above the top of its profile, but run into resistance at 233.97. So this is pretty simple. If price can close above 233.97, well, then it'll be above that 233.79 area out there. So you will have two levels that will have failed. That's what you want to see being in that long position. And that would suggest what? Well, that would suggest, um, that's a great question. What would that suggest? I would have to say, there I'd really have to go really to a retracement uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the move. So I'll go back to the black background charts out there. I don't see any other real identifiable levels that you would then need to look at. But if we just simply put up these retracement areas here, give me a moment here. We get the retracement uh, tool out. Should be right here. And we'll go from the high out there. Well, that was from August the 15th down to the low that came in. It looks like that would have been um, yesterday down at the uh, 225 level. So you're also at the 0.382 retracement. So closing above the top of that profile, 233.79. We'll call it 233.97 right now. That's that sort of change on the 195-minute chart. That would at least then suggest, uh, Nick, that you get up to the 238.90 level. That would be your 0.618 retracement area. If price can get above that, then you're looking at 242.49. So uh, the theme of the day, or at least the theme as of 11.22, has been everything is testing resistance. And if those resistance levels can fail, well, then what we probably have is a uh, the beginning of, it's really not the beginning of window dressing, but we have the beginning of the end of the month uh, markup out there that, quite frankly, ought to take us into next Friday out there. That was September the uh, 2nd. So, Nick, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Our next request coming in from Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector wants to take a look at XOM. Hector writes in, happy Thursday, Margaritaville on the rocks, half salt, Thursday. Now that, Hector, is something that sounds pretty good for lunch. Or, or well, then I better not really do that afternoon update uh, or the evening update. As you know, we have been uh, delightful subscribers. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Uh, your archive seminars are amazing. Blessings. Well, thank you. XOM, utilize your toolboxes. We sold out uh, June 7th. On July 14th, you load it back up. And on August 15th, load it up again. Here we are again, trading decision time. We see about two to three weeks more of an upside. Please advise. Um, grateful for Steve. -O. Thank you. So Exxon Mobil out here. What you have is a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. The B point from a daily, so let's just simply expand out the chart, make it easier, maybe make sure I'm on the right chart. Yeah, okay. So you got the A point out here, Hector. That's from uh, July 14th. Your B point was from the trading day of July 29th. That high was 97.52. 29 million shares were uh, uh, sold that day. You crossed the B point two days ago with 24 million shares. Yesterday was 17 million shares. So has it taken it out with volume? No, but the volume's not that bad. Do you have to take it out with volume in order to complete an A to B equals CD pattern? Absolutely not. You do not. It just gives you maybe more confidence. But your price projection level out here, Hector, is 103.11. When we just simply take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, price is trading into its swing point from June the 6th. That has 147 million. We are trading into that with much lighter volume. But if price can close above the low, which is 98.67, even if it's on light volume, price can still gravitate up towards that top at 105.57. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it's bullish, meaning above profile levels. But now what we need to do is go take a look at Stevie's three time frame charts out there. We'll change our screen, see if there's any kind of signals here, because you say now is the time for a decision making time. But when we look at the daily time frame chart, knowing that you've taken out a B point of an A to B equals CD, even if it's on lighter volume, you still have the A to B equals CD pattern in play. You're only in bar number six. So on the daily time frame, we don't see any kind of a topping signal. Doesn't mean it can't have topped. It's just we don't see a topping signal out here. Nor do we have that on the weekly time frame. We really discuss that, push it into a swing point with lighter volume. We do have the TD9 count top on the monthly time frame. But price above profiles and its green oscillator and change line, and that signal is neutral. The signal on the weekly chart, which also has a Rhodes Mint indicator top, is neutral as well. On a 30-minute chart, that's the last one that we'll take a look at out here. The 30-minute chart shows what? 
chose a uh, whoops, Rhodesman Dominicator top. Got that nice little uh, bear sash candle that formed right here at 1030. Uh, so what price should do with regard to XOM, uh, Hector, is pull back to support. Net support level would be 97.64. That is the 30-minute bottom of its profile. Now, if price closes below that area, then we're looking at a run back to yesterday's gap to the upside out there. We don't have any signal that that's what's going to unfold. Price would have to close below 97.64 before we begin entertaining that kind of an idea out there. So is it decision-making time? You say, can this run higher for the next uh, couple of weeks? I'd say we need to go take a look at light sweet crude. So even though you didn't ask about it, let's go do that. We come back from this breakout here. We'll uh, we'll look at Lights We Crude and uh, and Nvidia for Joey D, IWM for Sam L, and uh, anything else that anybody requested inside the Tigers Den. We'll be right. Back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at Light Speed Crude here. We're going to look at the uh, top uh, screen. Now, this has got, um, you know, the shortest time frame on this is the uh, daily time frame. So here's what we know about uh, light speed crude. We can see that uh, light speed crude is trading above last year's high. So it's in full out bullish mode out there. If we take a look at uh, the monthly time frame, prices pull back, test and reject that green oscillator and change line. And so uh, although there is a sell the D point, that shooting star from back in the uh, when was that? That was well, let me see here. Tell you what month that was. That was the month of uh, March 2022. Um, so it's neutral, neutral to bullish. The weekly time frame, you're, you've got a confirmed TD nine count bottom. So with regard to can Exxon Mobil continue to move higher, the energy sector, to the extent that it's going to maintain its correlation with regard to light speed crude, the weekly time frame chart is suggesting that it wants to move up to 103.07, and the daily time frame. 
Uh, it looks like it wants to move higher as uh, well out there. So, uh, yeah, I think the answer to your question is that uh, it can at least move higher into that area. How long does it take to get up to the 10306 level? That I don't know. If it uh, completes that next week, then that could be that could be where you would get the uh, next indication, perhaps, of a move to the downside. So we've got a bunch of questions that have come in. So let's get to uh, those out here. Let me close out this uh, this set of charts out there, and then we'll go over to that. The first request coming in from uh, Duffy, who wants to take a look at uh, BHP. So uh, we've got a number of requests. I'm going to try to make each of these as uh, efficient and as I possibly can. Uh, first, we've got to change the screen. So give me a moment here just to do a little housekeeping. Now let's get to our three panel set of charts out here for BHP. So in the upper left, you've got the uh, daily time frame. Where are we at? Well, you are in wave number seven. That begins today. Uh, now, that wave number seven, Duffy, will not be confirmed until you have a lower high. Wave number sevens can be a top. You can also see an A to B equals CD pattern. So whether it's wave seven, uh, because you've got the A to B equals CD, I'd really be looking for a bearish reversal candle in BHP to signal a uh, topping pattern from a daily time frame that would then take price back to support. The first level of support right now for BHP would be 57.56. Below that would be its oscillator and change line, currently printing to 56. 56.69. The weekly chart out here shows that price pulled back to its breakout level of support, held that level of support, and has moved higher ever since. It's inside a weekly bullish structured profile, and this suggests getting up to 60.49. So uh, likely this will move higher, but watch for that daily bearish reversal signal to suggest at least a short-term pullback. And inside the monthly time frame chart, what I see is resistance at 60.86 out there. So it looks like 60.49 to 60.86, where price wants to head to. Watch for that bearish reversal candle, because that would indicate, again, a short-term top. So that was BHP. Duffy also wants to take a look at NTR. So let's get NTR up on our screen out there. Why is that not uh, familiar to me? Um, it's because uh, Nutrien, no reason for it to be familiar to me. But it's in a, a nice uh, move higher. It's got a large A to B equals CD pattern. I won't put the A to B equals CD pattern in there. Why? Because if you take a look at the weekly chart, price is above the top of its weekly profile in a with a wide-ranging bar. And the A to B, it's a large A to B equals CD. So this suggests that price is going to make a run for the 117.25 level out there. So if you're in this, stay in this. Uh, no topping pattern on the monthly time frame. Uh, price above its green oscillator and change line. So this is in full-out bullish mode. That is a Nutrien Limited out there. So, Duffy, a nice uh, nice deal here. Uh, no top that I see in uh, place, and this should continue to move higher. So thanks for those two requests out there. The next one coming in from um, San L. Uh, IWM is what uh, San would like to take a look at. And uh, we will pull this up. We will also take a look at I've got the time. Yeah, I think we got the time. We'll take a look at the uh, the Russell 2000 equity future contract out here. But with regard to the IWM, what do we know? So you know you've got a nice TD9 count bottom on the monthly time frame. What this suggests, Sam, is typically when price makes a top or bottom. In this case here, you've got a TD9 count bottom. What price will then do is head up to its oscillator and change line, which is the 205.83 level bottom of its profile, 207.65. So that is where longer term, the IWM is saying it wants to head to. That could be by next Tuesday. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it has a road momentum indicator bottom. Price got up two weeks ago, closed above resistance, the top of its profile, back below it last week. So what is this doing? It's just consolidating right now. But a close above 197.27, that'll get us up into that 205, 207 level out there. Your resistance, though, inside the IWM, is really the bottom of its profile. And that's at 195.58. But the real resistance here, to the extent you're just watching the IWM SAN, is going to be its oscillator and change line, which is currently printed 196.38 out there. So we don't have a bottom pattern on the daily time frame for the IWM, but very bullish on the uh, weekly, very bullish on the uh, monthly time frame out there. So the question is, can price take out that resistance of 195.58? And I do not know the answer to that. I wish I knew the answer to that. If I knew the answer to that, I'd give you the answer. But the question is, uh, can the answer be given to us by taking a look at the intraday charts? So let's go find out if we uh, put in 09-22 out here and take a look at the 10, 15, 30-minute charts, see if there's any kind of signal information that can help you out with that question. So it's populated, it's populated. Come on, give us the answer. Give us the answer out here. 
that means really just completely signal information on these charts so that I can at least narrate for you what the charts are telling them. So on a, there we go, on a 15-minute basis, you have a TD9 count top. What does price do? It pulls back to uh, the support area of its bullish structured profile. That was between 1942 and 1945. You need to see price hold 1940-40. If price closes below that, we're headed lower. How much lower? I'm not sure just yet, but we would be headed lower. Your resistance level right now is if price can close above 1953-70. Now, this on a 10-minute basis out there. That says price should go retarget its recent highs. 15-minute, not helping me out. Uh, 30 minutes got a wave number seven, a Rosemont indicator top. The ultimate level of support here would be 1941.90. So I gave you 1940.40, 1941.90. That's your key level of support. 60 minute chart may be forming a Rosemont indicator top. Its key level of support would be 1935. So our range of support on a retracement out here, Sanel, for the Russell 2000 equity future contract, which is where we get our best signals, even if you're trading the IWM. I'm not saying that you need to trade the futures contract, but if you'd like to become a pattern recognition person, expert, master out there, you want more information, not less information. And that's why an instrument that trades for six and a half hours is nowhere near as good as something that trades for 23 hours and 15 minutes out here. So that's Russell 2000 out there. You've got a potential TD9 count top on the 240 out here. Uh, that would be an end of the day signal. Uh, the same thing for the 120. You are in bar number eight right now. It's made a higher high, but bar number nine has to complete. And that means that price, well, just it, uh, this bar closes at 12. Is that possible? Yeah, 12. Next one would be at two. So the two o'clock close just simply needs to be above 1946.40 in order to generate a, a TD9 count there. So I hope that helps you out. San L with regard to the IWM. Let's go to our next question out here. It's from MKC and the Tigers Den. And MKC is like would like to take a look at Intel. I N T C is the uh, ticker symbol there, and it's just please. So I don't know what uh, MKC is looking for, but let's see what the charts tell us they are doing out here. Remember, nothing more fundamental than what buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. So as we take a look at Intel, it negated a TD nine count bottom. That TD9 count bottom had formed August 9th and August the 10th out there. You're below the bottom of its profile. You're trying to get back inside its oscillator and change line. I don't see a bottom out here. If you did get a, a bullish report, well, you got a hammer candle yesterday. So let me study this just a tad more, just a tad more during this breakout here, MKC. Um, see if I can come up with anything. But really, Intel's not looking that great. Price trading right now below 34.93. That's its monthly TD9 count breakdown. Yikes. Zero to tip in. Right? You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking like an intel out here. It was that uh, daily hammer candle from uh, yesterday that had caught my attention. And the reason I wanted to go back and do a little bit more in-depth uh, view of intel. So if we take a look at the uh, monthly time frame chart, you see a nice A to B equals CD pattern that uh, has made the one to one price projection level. So if it's made this A to B equals CD pattern on the monthly time frame, it's made that same thing on the weekly time frame. It's made that same thing on the daily time frame. So on the daily time frame, you have a confirmed by the D point pattern. Now, what price would need to do to suggest uh, that it's going to potentially have a change in trend or rally further is close above resistance. That's a brand new profile that formed today. Seems like today is all about resistance. That level is 34.79. That's the area to watch. If price can get above 34.79, then price should run to 36.48, but more likely 37.42. If the rally is going to stop, it would be 37.42, where price should stop dead in its tracks. That's the center of its bullish structured profile. Now, you have a bull, uh, bullish engulfing candle, bull sash candle that uh, formed out here on the trading day of uh, the trading week of August the 8th. The low of that is support, 34.40. So if price closed below 34.40 on a weekly basis, even though it really needs to close below yesterday's low of 33.60, but if it closed on a weekly basis below that 34.40, then we have a failed by the D point pattern out there. And that would suggest to Stevie that price heads lower out there. Now, on the monthly time frame, you really need to see some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom there. So it's suspect, but it doesn't mean we can't get more rally. And in fact, if price closed about 34.79, we should get more rally, and that takes us to 36.48 to 37.42. It's at 37.42 MKC that you'd be looking at potentially making a decision. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go to our next request out there, and that was for Nvidia. Nvda is the uh, ticker symbol. And this is for Joey D in the uh, Tiger's Den. I'm going to stay with the black background charts for the moment and uh, see what pops up here. So Nvidia. Uh, because there's a bunch of new profiles. No new profile here, but price is trying to get back inside its daily profile. Uh, it is back inside the weekly, and it looks like it's uh, sitting at the bottom of its uh, monthly profile. So what does that do for us? Not much. What do we see out here? You almost see a sideways consolidation, but let's go look at the other charts, see if there's any other kind of patterns out there other than just that sideways movement. And that sideways movement will look something like this. Let me draw that in as long as I am on this uh, screen out here. And to Stevie, the consolidation will look something like this. I'm not going to get it right exact to the uh, T, but uh, about like that is our uh, consolidation pattern. Now, in the case of the weekly chart, the weekly chart is suggesting to you and I that on a further move higher, and we'll go confirm whether that's like the outcome, what the NVIDIA should do is get up to the 191.64 level. So now let's go change that white background chart, see if we can find the reasons for price or what does price need to do in order to get up to 191.64, and the answer is there right in front of us. And that is price needs to close about that green oscillator and change line. That is currently printing out at 180.01. So if price can close above 180.01, then that's going to get us up into the top of that daily profile, 190.38, which gets us up into the 191.64 level out there. Uh, is there anything else that we see out here? <clears throat> so the question is, has the A to B equals CD to the downside been completed out there? And I'm looking at the weekly time frame chart. 
And uh, I'm just going to do this, draw this up on my uh, black background charts out there, see if it's actually attained the one-to-one -one level. It most certainly has. The weekly time frame uh, generated a uh, bullish hammer candle the week of July the 15th out there. So what we have on a weekly basis is a confirmed by the D-point pattern or a Gartley buy pattern. Again, this is suggesting that price should make that move to the 191.64 level. The proof of that will be getting above that green daily oscillator and change line. So, Joey D., does that answer your questions that you had about NVIDIA? I hope that it does. So let's go to our next question out there. And right, if it if it hasn't, or there's some other specific question that you need answered, please type that in the den, and we'll go ahead and get to that. David in Tomball, Texas, wants to take a look at Occidental Petroleum out here. I didn't read the message. I just caught the symbol. And the question is... Is Oxy a confirmed A to B equals CD up to around the $90 level on a weekly chart out there? All right. So now let's go back to the black background charts. That's where we're going to draw our A to B equals CD patterns out here. So give us a moment to get there. And let's go ahead and change out the symbol, OXY. And then uh, and since we already looked at the oil contract, we got your, got your question number two out here. So your question is, is there an A to B equals CD up to around 90 around 90 well, on the weekly basis. So the easier A to B equals CD, there's a, the A to B equals CD pattern is already underway. And it's just, um, do I have that same one? I've got the same one for the weekly and the day, and the uh, monthly out here. So is there, uh, is there a price projection that can get you up to 80, 51? Yeah, that would be the one to two A to B equals CD pattern, which are the A to B equals CD patterns I've used for both the daily and the weekly time frame. So that answers the A to B equals CD pattern. The uh, daily time frame, it's A to B equals CDS at the 1 to 1.618 level. This next price target would be 80.32. That would be the 1 to 2 area out there. So now let's go back to those white background charts. So do I have a 90 out here? Yeah, I mean, I've got 97.34. That would be on the monthly time frame chart. That would also be on the uh, weekly time frame chart. But before price gets there, we need to go take a look at that white background set of charts out there and uh, see what other pieces of information we can provide to David. It looks bullish. Why does it look bullish? No bearish reversal candle and to say to B equals CD pattern of the upside. You're only in bar number five. Should head higher. On a weekly basis, you've taken out prior resistance. That was just simply a prior swing point out there. That looks bullish. The monthly chart for Occidental Petroleum says price should go target 83.35. That is the TD nine count breakdown level. So we've got 83.35 is a likely next stop for you, David. Thanks much for writing in. Our next request is from Meg Guppy to take a look at KWEB. So let's get those charts up on our screen here and see what they have to say uh, to us. Uh, KWEB, that is some type of web. Is that the Chinese web? What is that? No, that is Crane Shares Trust China Internet. Yeah, okay, Chinese web. So what you've got today out here, uh, McGuppy, is prices trading above the top of its daily profile. So, no, that is a, a bullish signal out there. I see an A to B equals CD, but I don't think that C to D leg completed out here. So let's just not worry about that. Why? Because price is above the top of its daily profile. On a monthly time frame, you do have a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. That was way back in March, March 18th to be specific. Right now, price is trying to get back inside its weekly profile. Close about 29.42 will do just that. And then your resistance level out here would be 31.39. 31.39 is where a counter trend rally would come to an end if this is just a counter trend move. So that's the area to watch. And if price can close above that, then you're looking at run to 34.36 out here. On a monthly time frame chart, I do not have a bottom. We just have a consolidation with inside its profile levels, and that would range from 2361 all the way up to 3643. So in summary, looks like 3139 should be the tech, uh, next price target for KWEB, and that's where you're going to find out if it's just a counter trend move or something more than that. The last question that we've got in the queue here is SCHW which uh, that is for uh, G-Man inside the Tigers and SCHW. Let's see if we can do this here real quickly. That is uh, Schwab uh, out here. And what is Charles Schwab doing? It, com it, 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 it completed a TD9 count pattern. Price pulled back. I don't know why it found support where it did. It just did find support. The question is, can price take out resistance? And it's really two resistance levels. Well, the first one is going to be 74.11. But when you get above that, uh, G-Man, this is a bear structured profile. So the entire resistance zone is really between 74.11 up to 77.41. The weekly chart shows what? It says, hey, if you can close above the top of that weekly profile, that would be a beautiful thing. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing a creative transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So back to uh, Charles Schwab just to finish this out and thank you to Mr. Bill for letting me know the weekly time frame uh, was not showing all of the uh, candle information out here. So we take a look at this. The While the monthly was tagging its roads, uh, the oscillator and change on at 77.41, we had a daily TD9 count occurring at the 77.41 level as well. And it's it, right now with price below its green oscillator and change line, this could be an A to B equals CD to the downside. I say could be. I don't know out here. If price closes above it, then you're into that resistance zone between 74.60 and 77.41. So it's just not that clear to Stevie at the moment with regard to what Charles Schwab wants to uh, do. If you had asked me to uh, guess, right now I have to say it's an A to B equals CD to the downside. It's trying to form out there. But uh, we got to let the day play out or maybe the next couple of days. So I hope that helps you out. That was for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. I believe that answers all of the questions. I think we got through everything. So that is a uh, beautiful thing. Uh, last thing is about the NQ, or just a signal in there about the NQ. Maybe it goes negative to a uh, day out here. Let's just simply go take a look at the NQ, see what kind of signal information we've got out here. And the signal information that we've got is... Come on, Stevie, help everybody out. And I got that 60-minute, back to the 60-minute chart out there. You're going to get a Roach Mentum Indicator signal out here in the next five minutes. But prices held support, the green oscillator and change line. That's the level to watch on a 60-minute basis. That's at 13.031. If price closes below that, odds favor move back to 12.925 out there. And I think that would certainly put things into a negative position. But price is sitting at support. 
TD9 count on the 120-minute time frame chart. Bar number eight is going to complete at 12. Bar number nine will complete or should will complete at, well, the question is, will bar number complete at 2 p.m.? And in order to do that out there, price must close above 13, oops, 13, come on, okay, uh, 13,003.75. Folks, stay tuned. We've got some great programming lined up. Have a terrific Thursday. Please join me tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. We'll be doing the show at the normal time at 11 a.m. Take care. Be safe out there. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.